In his quest for energy, man has forgotten that all the sources being used for providing energy are exhaustible. The result is an energy crisis on all fronts. Cooking fuel famine stalks large parts of the country today. Firewood, which meets more than half of the cooking fuel demand, is becoming scarce as forests disappear gradually. Women and children have to trudge long distances in search of firewood, spending as much as 6 to 10 hours a day for collecting branches, twigs, dried shrubs or whatever that can be burnt to provide fuel. prices of alternate fuels like coal and kerosene is increasing the dependence on firewood, thus accelerating the process of deforestation. So how do we meet the cooking fuel demands of the people? Sooner or later, we will have to think in terms of developing renewable energy sources, which are valuable from the environment point of view also. purpose of using renewable energy sources would be to meet some very basic and crying needs of people. The most fundamental of all being the use of various forms of biomass to cook food. Now cooking energy is the most fundamental energy need of all. Therefore, Renewable energy sources have to be developed to meet the increasing demands for cooking fuel and to enable women to cook in better conditions. There is really no dearth of biogas resources in our country. Cow dung, which is presently burnt for fuel, can be used more efficiently by generating biogas from it. Not only would biogas provide 25% more energy than burning cow dung, it will also save time and labor spent by women for making dung cakes. India has enough biogas resources to meet the cooking fuel needs of one third of total households in the country. In biogas plants, Fermentation of dung generates biogas, which can be used for cooking, lighting or power generation. Gober is converted into slurry by mixing water. This slurry is then allowed to ferment in the tank. After 40 days of fermentation, the biogas thus generated is collected in the metal domes. The pressure generated by the incoming slurry pushes out the effluent which is dried in pits. This effluent, which is rich in nitrogen, is usually used as manure to improve the soil fertility. After proper treatment, the effluent can also be used as feed for fish.
pipes are connected to the metal domes and they serve as an outlet for the gas which is regulated through a regulator and distributed through pipelines to the user. A special type of gas burner is used for cooking purposes. Where agricultural waste or biomass is available in abundance, it can be mixed with cow dung and used for generating biogas. Individual biogas plants have been quite successful in adequately meeting the cooking fuel demand of a small family. In hilly areas, biogas plants can be run on biomass alone. For this, dried leaves or any other type of biomass are put into the pit where they decompose. This decomposed biomass is then converted into biogas and slurry. Managed efficiently, community biogas plants can become an answer to the energy problem in Indian villages. In the past, while setting up the biogas plant, certain crucial social aspects were neglected, which led to failure of this technology. Women were rarely consulted before setting up these projects and their problems were overlooked. They are of the opinion that they have to prepare things in advance. Timing of gas supply is short and once disconnected they are helpless. And on the contrary they have to pay more for the gas. Sukhbir Gill, a social worker, says that the problem in running a community biogas plant is threefold. In the first place, there is groupism amongst the villagers. Moreover, the views of an individual are ignored to avoid confrontation. To overcome these problems, societies are formed. Second is regarding the timings of releasing the biogas, which is, however, decided by consensus. Then, there is lack of sense of belongingness. The villagers think about it as a government project, and they have nothing to do with it. The people should feel that this is their own project, and they have to make the best use of the community biogas plant. In the context of biomass utilization for power generation, there's one thing that we should be careful about and that is the biomass available today, that is agricultural waste and other things, are being used as fuel, probably with less efficiency than desirable or than possible. 
and if we use this on a large scale for conversion to power the power will go to relatively the wealthier sections of rural society and the poor man's fuel which biomass is today would be diverted to the rich man's power supply this is the apprehension i have the danger is that only about 10% of the rural household possess enough cattle to feed the family size plant by using the cow dung for their own needs these richer farmers would deprive the poor of a fuel that is freely available at present however all these problems can be easily overcome and biogas can become a potential source of cooking fuel in indian villages but how do we provide electricity to these villages through hydroelectric power stations which cause forest destruction and massive displacement of human communities or thermal power stations which has become a major source for land destruction and heavy atmospheric pollution we have to explore avenues elsewhere one choice is harnessing sun's light energy and converting it into electricity through photovoltaic cells solar cells are made of silicon when radiation falls on cell it generates electric current which charges the storage batteries for later use large panels of photovoltaic cells can be used for running pumps street lighting and smaller plants of photovoltaic cells can efficiently run a transistor radio the problem in this technology is that lead acid storage batteries need permanent maintenance the total cost of installing an electric grid using photovoltaic cells is also very high Another choice available to us is to harness sun's enormous heat energy for heating purposes. For heating water, an array of solar panels are set up. These panels are painted black from inside for maximum absorption of sun's heat. The tubes inside the panels carry cold water which when heated by sun's heat is taken out and stored in an insulated tank for use water can be heated up to 60 to 70 degrees centigrade depending on the number of solar panels used yet another novel method of utilizing sun's heat is to get water distilled for this purpose water is fed into a conventional basin type solar still as the water heats up it evaporates and condenses as pure water on the cover and flows into collection channels on the side solar still proves to be useful for laboratories where distilled water is needed an important domestic thermal application of sun is that of a solar cooker This typical box type solar cooker consists of a black insulated box and has two glass covers on top. A reflecting mirror has to be aligned with the direction of the sun. At 140 degrees centigrade, rice, dal, vegetables can be boiled within 1 or 2 hours. Although the government offers subsidies on solar cookers, 
they are still very expensive and beyond the reach of the rural poor. Moreover, solar cooker would require a change in cooking habits as most of the cooking is done when the sun is not shining strongly, that is, in the mornings and evenings. A solar cooker, however, would prove useful for urban, low-middle class households who spend a large part of their income on kerosene and fuel wood. But the problem is current housing style of multi-storied flats with no backyard and without access to the roof. Until and unless there is a breakthrough in solar technology bringing its costs down, it will not become popular. The spectrum is of course very wide at present and many uh, research items of research have been taken up. But the ones which have matured for use today I would say are solar thermal energy, that is solar heat used for cooking or for heating water. That is viable nowadays, particularly for those who buy fuel. They do feel the saving is uh, worthwhile and uh, the investment is uh, worthwhile. But uh, in the case of other technologies, either they are too expensive or they are still not reliable because energy is something we want on tap and many of the technologies at present they depend on the sun or the wind which is not available on tap. That can we use renewable energy technologies to replace oil, electricity, things mm. like that. Mm. To my mind that's a very simple thing. This is then not the non-commercial sector of the energy sector but it's the, non -com the commercial part of the energy sector. And there is basically a matter of competition. Mm. If the renewable energy technologies can be so researched upon that they can compete. Any industrialist will come forward and say, I am not going to use oil to heat my boilers, I am going to use solar energy. Mm. I am not going to use uh, power station electricity, I am going to use it from solar cells. It is basically a question of competition. We need an enormous amount of research and development to bring the cost down. In the, in the in interim period, we can do a certain amount of demonstration work to convince people that the feasibility, the technological feasibility is there and that the economic viability is coming very soon or in certain cases is already reduced, the government can provide some incentives, etc, etc. The wind energy is yet another resource from our environment which can be used to generate energy. Wind energy can be used to move the blades of a windmill. The rotating movement of the windmill is changed into energy through a crank to work a piston up and down. The piston is used to draw water out of deep wells or tanks which can be stored up for use. But the windmill tends to be idle for a major part of the year in plains where wind velocity is generally low. Therefore, area identification is required before installation. Windmills, if installed in areas of high winds, like coastal areas, can produce enough energy for electricity generation, pumping, irrigation, and farm applications such as grain winnowing, shelling, cutting, and grinding. Efforts are also being made to design and develop aero generators, which will help to generate electricity. More new ideas are being generated to develop renewable energy sources. A gasifier for electricity generation is being developed which uses 80% of biogas and 20% of diesel. Electricity thus generated can be used for many agricultural activities. 
High amounts of city waste, which pose problems of disposal, are also going to be utilized for producing electricity. The garbage could either be decomposed to generate gas or incinerated to generate electricity. How far do these projects solve the energy problem? We talked to the Secretary, Department of Non-Conventional Energy Sources. Means what will be the future? Suppose we want to get, give a message to our viewers that this is going to be the future if everything works well. Yes, well, um, we have examples of this already in many, many villages in India uh, where we are providing all the energy needs of the village, whether it's for lighting or for pumping or um, small rural industry and for cooking, um, everything from its own sources, that's a, its own wastes, the biomass which it grows on its own, ter on its own area, and the sun and the wind or the small streams that might be going around it. So this combined um, system is what we call an urjagram, an energy village. And uh, I find it's very exciting uh, that um, if all these sources are used, the village becomes more or less self-sufficient in energy from its own renewable sources. It is a village which is uh, full of light and joy. It's clean because there is no smoke. It has power for its doing its own things. And all this is within its own control. Non-conventional energy sources is the answer to the energy problem. But first, they have to be made more economical so that they can be affordable by the poor man. Community polytechnics are playing a pivotal role in promoting the use of non-conventional energy sources through transfer of technology. They conduct surveys to identify technologies demonstrate them, fabricate and install them, and train the rural people so that these appropriate technologies can be effectively utilized and easily maintained by them. For the success of non-conventional energy program, not only is it crucial to identify the target group but also the appropriate technology for that area. Thus, it is essential that people are made aware and trained in the use of these technologies only then these can prove to be effective in solving the energy crisis.